going under the hood a little bit with the Longo offense, the techniques, we're going to do a new segment called Coach's Corner, bringing in somebody to talk a little bit of the X's and O's and how this process is unfolding, maybe from a coach's eye. All that and more on today's Locked On Badgers. You are Locked On Badgers, your daily podcast on the Wisconsin Badgers. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What is going on, Badger fans? Welcome to Locked On Badgers, your team every single day. Really do appreciate everybody tuning in. Uh, today we got a fun guest. We got Ryan Anderson jumping on, head coach of Slay as a Wolfpack. Uh, an interesting coaching journey, interesting life perspective. Uh, calling it from Denmark. Coach, um, appreciate you jumping on. Really excited to get your, your feedback on how uh, the, this football season is going so far. But I want to start here because you are the first person calling in from Denmark. Um, really quickly, kind of what's your coaching journey to get from being a Wisconsin guy to uh, where you are now? Yeah, uh, well, first, uh, thanks for having me. Um, yeah, uh, now I'm Wisconsin, born and raised from Baraboo, 40 minutes from Madison. Um, in college, I decided to take a gap year um, after my sophomore year of college, and uh, I went to Sweden, and this was in 2002. And while I was there, I kind of kind of randomly found football as something I played in high school, like, like everybody, but I thought, oh, this could be fun, something to do. And uh, I kind of never went home. So, you know, I, a couple years here and there, coached kind of all around Europe for – I uh, coached in Sweden, Austria, Finland, Ireland, and then in uh, 2008 came over to Denmark to coach. And and coaching in Europe can be kind of a mercenary thing. You one year here, one year here, one year there. But uh, I met my wife, so that kind of set that I was going to be going to be here for good. So uh, been with a couple teams, but I've been with my my current club for the last uh, three, four years, and it's pretty solid. It's like I have said, tell the people, it's like coaching Pop Warner High School, college, and the NFL at the same time, because it's, you have all the different, you have from complete, literally have never seen the sport rookies to NFL talent and everything in between and different, you know, time commitments and stuff like that. So it's ever evolving, ever changing. I never know who's going to be at, on game days or who's going to get called into work or anything like that. It's it adds a real fun dynamic to coaching. And as much as I'd love to go home someday and coach, the challenge I get over here is just, it's too much to pass up. So I love being here doing it. I love it, man. That's a, that's a fascinating story. And I, I could probably spend a whole 30 minutes of the show just talking <laughs> about the passion of football for, you know, outside of America, what it's like, where you're mm -hmm. playing, logistics of it. Uh, but another thing that's really interesting to me, and one of the reasons we came together is you have, um, you're an air raid guy. You've studied it. It's yeah. what you coach. I want to ping you on Phil Longo, Wisconsin. Uh, fans have been, I would say, a little frustrated at the pace of, of the product. Um, right. Is this aligning to what you expected? What have you seen so far from the layout of the Philongo offense? Yeah, I mean, I th I think like like all fans, I got caught up in the hype at the beginning. I was excited. I was blown away that they got Phil Longo. I never in a million years would I have thought we would have gotten him. Um, and so, you know, once once we knew he was coming in, I knew the air raid could work. At Wisconsin, because it it has as much to do with the philosophy than it does X's and O's and personnel. It's you know the the saying is has been said many times. It's about getting athletes in space and letting athletes make plays. Wisconsin has athletes. Wisconsin can get guys in space. I knew that would be fine, um, but the roster isn't quite probably where Phil Longo wants it to be. And it's going to take time. Um, I've seen some encouraging signs with what we've been what we've been doing. Um, I can see the kind of you know the evolution of what we've been adding um, week to week from Buffalo to Wazoo. So I, I I think we're on the right track, but scheme can only cover up so much in roster deficiencies. Scheme also um, can't cover mental errors, 
uh, timing errors that come from injuries. Um, we have true freshmen playing. We have a backup center playing. Those are ex- as much excuses as they are legitimate reasons. But I think from where we, from where the Paul Christ era offense ended to where we are now, I think we're on pace to be where Phil Longo wants to be by the end of the season. Um, and I, and I've been saying this too, it's like the Badgers were a six loss team last year. Eight and four is an improvement. It's not what we, it's not what fans want. Fans think, Oh, Phil, uh, Luke fickle. We're going to the playoffs year one. Okay. I think now these first two weeks we've, okay, we've calmed down a little bit. Um, we kind of see where we are, but it's, it's on the right path. I think it's on the right path. Talk to me about, you mentioned you've seen encouraging signs, right? Like uh, what, what are some of the things you've seen that say, yeah, we're on the right path here? I really like Tanner uh, Mordecai's, his, you can tell he's getting more confident in the pocket. His, you know, some people are calling it antsy. You can see him going through his progression. He's limiting his, his, uh, mental mistakes i think his mistakes he's made so far have been physical more than mental um he's this last game i think we saw his ability to avoid pressure how he's feeling the pocket um that's been a good sign uh i think chez and and braylon complement complement each other really well their two contrasting running styles fit with what we're trying to do um and the receiving core is pretty solid. I think the transfers definitely you can see their impact, uh, especially Bryson Green and uh, Will Pauling. They've really been uh, a really solid addition. I think without them, I don't know if we quite have the the receivers to do it. But so those are encouraging signs. Um, the offensive line has adapted to the the change in the run schemes, the pass protection schemes. There are some, again, physical de- deficiencies that we're kind of getting hurt with there. But, you know, it's nobody seems lost. Nobody seems like that, you know, what they're trying to do is 10, 10% above their capabilities. It's, it's, we can do it. It just comes down to execution. And I think right now that's kind of where we're lacking is, is this straight up execution. Well, let, let's go there. You mentioned offensive line. Everyone's going to immediately say, well, Jack Nelson. Like, what Mm -hmm. did you see watching that game with Jack Nelson? Yeah, I think, you know, week one against Buffalo, I think what everyone was saying about Jack Nelson, I was saying about Riley Mullman. And I think we saw it this week. There's no ways around it. I think Nelson and Mullman and Fertney are slow. And they are just, I don't want to say unathletic enough. They're too top heavy at times and Jack Nelson this last week, it really showed that he has a problem with speed and his, his upper body doesn't match his lower body. His, his hands get too far in front of his feet. He can't keep good balance. And where that number 10 for Wazoo this last week just made him look silly. Um, And Again, not to put the kid down, but everyone's saying NFL talent, Jack Nelson. I think he's going to be a great backup right guard in the NFL. Uh, He's not a tackle. He's too slow. Um, You know, I think, which comes down to, I think, you know, maybe part of the problem with the line is the fact that, you know, Renfro is out and Tanner Bordellini isn't playing guard. And I think that balance might make things a little bit better. But yeah, definitely tackle play so far this year has been sorely lacking. Um, a lot of missed blocks. Um, well, and I want to ping you on that coming out of this break and, and kind of teed up if you're looking at it from your coaching perspective, is that something that they're going to be able to scheme around as the season? Because the season's going to get harder. Mm-hmm. A lot. Now, yeah. we're not yeah. going to play a ton of pass rushers better than Stone at Washington no. State. He's an NFL no. guy, I think. But yeah, we're going to play better front sevens. Uh, So yeah, I'm going to ping you on that coming up out of the break. But first, today's show is brought to you by our good friends over at Jace Medical. Um, Jace Medical is a tremendous company trying to make sure that nobody 
is going to be unprepared. You empower yourself, empower your family to take care of your medical needs in case of an emergency. Jace Medical, the, the Jace case, which I have coming my way, I'm really excited about, gives you five life-saving antibiotics for emergency use. So when something happens, you don't have to find a pharmacy that's open if you live in a rural area, or you don't have to try to find a pharmacy not impacted by a disaster if you're in a hurricane or whatever it is. Use the Jace case to prevent or to, to kind of provide safety for your family, to provide emergency preparedness for your family. That's what this company does. Don't get caught unprepared. Everybody should be empowered to take care of themselves and their loved ones during the unexpected. Right now, save more than $360 by getting these life-saving antibiotics with Jace, plus an additional $20 off using our code Locked On at checkout on jacemedical.com. Everyone should be empowered to care for themselves and their loved ones during the unexpected. That's why Jace Medical offers the Jace case, five life-saving antibiotics to give you peace of mind so that you're just not hoping you have access to medical care. You do have access to medical care. Jace Medical is simple. They handle everything from the online evaluation to licensed pharmacy medication delivery and ongoing consultation and care. Don't get caught unprepared. Save more than $360 by getting life-saving antibiotics with Jace Medical plus an additional $20 off using code Locked On at checkout on jacemedical.com. That's J-A-S-E medical.com, promo code Locked On. I really do appreciate everybody tuning in. Let's get Coach, uh, Coach Anderson back on here. Coach, do you want to give you a second? Uh, where can people find? Because I know you have a, a sub stack. You have uh, some analytical work you're doing on the side. Where can people find your work and your breakdowns of the Badger games? Yeah, I just kind of started it up at, at uh, the, the uh, excuse me, the Dairy Raid. Um, saw somebody say that right after Longo got hired. And was like, yep, I'm going to steal that. Um, so, yeah, I have that up on on Twitter. And that also links to, to YouTube where I've done um, taking the – the broadcast feed of the last couple of games and gone through and just kind of given kind of running commentary on what we've been doing. And uh, yeah, that's been a lot of fun, actually. It's again, it's kind of, it's hard for me to watch games as a fan because of my, of, of what I do for a living. So this kind of allows me to make my job a hobby as well. So that's been a lot of fun. I love it. And we're definitely going to link that in the show notes as well. So please go check out what Ryan's doing there. Coach Anderson's doing there. All right. I wanted to continue talking about offense line because one of the discussions we had was seeing Nelson struggle with stone a little bit. It didn't seem like they, they, the coach, I say they, the coaching staff moved the back over there or a tight end or uh, rolled away from it. Is that something that surprised you or is that something you expect to see going forward? <sighs> I think what you're going to probably see more instead of adjusting cover or protection with the back, I think you're just going to see quicker drops and getting the ball out in space quicker. Uh, I also think we're going to start seeing more in the terms of RPOs and access throws on, on run plays to try to have those, those more pass rushing types be a little bit more indecisive uh, we haven't seen much of QB run game, design QB run game, uh, like zone reads and stuff like that. We did see a couple speed options uh, against Wazoo, which I like to see. I think stuff like that you're going to see a little bit more of to try to slow ends down. But you're right. I think Wazoo really had athletes all over their defense. I was re actually really impressed with their defense, um, both Stone and uh, their safeties were all over the place. And that was, you know, talking about the run game. They, we got six in the box, but they're adding seven and eight by those safeties coming downhill. And nobody accounts for the safeties in run schemes. And so that's kind of an issue there. So we, we you know, finding ways to, to put those players more in conflict is going to make things easier. Uh, but I think we're going to see with, with the passing game, a lot of quick game and a lot of quick three drops uh a lot of just one step get it out in space so i see a lot of like bubble screens and stuff like that um to try to mask what they're doing uh but i think part of it too is like running back protection i don't think braylon allen is that good of a pass blocker uh I've saw seen it in the last few games. He loves to throw a shoulder at guys, but he's not a really solid pass blocker. So if you're going to keep it back in more, that might mean Braylon gets less reps mm. because Chez is a better pass blocker. 
Jackson Aker is probably a better pass blocker than both of them because with his experience playing fullback. So that would be interesting. Uh, that would that would probably telegraph a little bit what you're doing though if you have eight. I eight think so. Right? Yeah, because you're not. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and 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 we're not at a point right now where Malusi is going to take over as a starter, even though maybe in my opinion he's a better fit for the scheme, uh, in terms of his running a bit, his running style. But, you know, this is Braylon's year. You know, you got to give him his reps. That's why he leads the conference in receptions, which is hilarious. Let me ping you there because yeah. I, I want to keep taking off this running list of questions in my head. That's another yeah. one that's come up a lot, right? Um, the, the swing passes, the designed quick passes to Braylon in the flat, mm-hmm. not successful this year so far. Like it, it, there's been a drop there. They're not getting many yards, many yards out of it. Do you think a that continues and b what is Longo trying to set something else up out of that? Yeah, I think. I mean, a lot of what the air raid does is working in layers. So you you know have a a deep option, a, sh- a mid option, a short option, um, especially when they're running stuff like mesh, where or they're running like snag concepts and stuff like that. You want that guy down in the flat. But part of it is, as well is it's it's part of that air raid philosophy, getting your athletes in space. Braylon is a NFL caliber running back. He's got to make a dude miss every now and then, you know, he's getting out in space and getting tackled one-on-one. Uh, you know, I think we're going to see maybe a little bit more diversity in what he does though. Speaking from experience with the air raids, running backs run a lot of bubbles. It's just kind of what we do with them. Um, I'd like to see him use the backs a little bit more on he, they've tried running uh, wheel routes with the running buck, running back up the scene. Um, they've run some flats. They've tried to do screens, but they haven't really been successful for those. Really the only ones where they're getting the back open are those flat routes. And I, I think it, it's going to come down to Braylon, maybe um, shedding a tackle every now and then uh, making a dude miss. Uh, but also, you know, getting the other receivers early in the progression because the running back a lot on a lot of these plays, he's the third, fourth option. So the fact that he's that Tanders even getting to him on the check down means somebody's not getting open above him. So that that's a contributing factor as well. Um, so that kind of all builds on each other. Let me ask you about the uh, the receiver separation. That's another question we've had. Um, it mm-hmm. seems at times like uh, Tanner's having to throw into pretty tight windows. Uh, even some of the deep throws, yeah. the coverage isn't too bad. When you look at the deep ball accuracy, are you saying Tanner needs to, to fit that ball in a little bit better? The receiver needs to get better separation. He needs to win at the 50-50 point. Uh, what are you looking at when you see some of the issues with the deep ball right now? Yeah, I think, I think definitely we need to do a better job of winning the one-on-one matchups. I think like Chimri DK has been really struggling with, with press coverage. Um, and there has been a couple instances, I mean, going back to, to the launch where one of Ricardo Holman's interception was just the fact that DK could not get off of him at all. And he just kind of stood still. There was a play this last weekend where I think he was trying to run some kind of fade route and he got jammed up by a corner and he kind of just stopped and so that has kind of been a little bit of an issue. Um, and, but I think also as well, it's coming down there. There's still a little bit of timing issues that I think is maybe coming down to the fact, uh, you know, our snaps are a little bit off. So Tanner's footwork's a little bit off. So maybe he's, it's accelerating the, the clock in his head to get rid of the ball maybe too quickly. And so we're not getting those, those shots on, especially on the left side. Um, he's not getting those shots off as quickly as he wants to. Um, but then also we're running quick concepts. You know, a lot of the, a lot of the goal balls that are uh, receivers are getting now, he's taking one and a half steps, two steps, putting his foot in the ground, just throwing it because he's, he's just looking at the matchup. So he's not really giving it time to develop because that's not what the play is calling for. It's just put the foot in the ground and throw it. Um, you know, it's, it's hitting the receivers in the hands. So we're getting there, but it's just, you know, six year quarterback has his way of doing things and his timing. And, you know, he's run this play a million times at Oklahoma and SMU, but we call it different and our footwork is different. And 
So it's, it's still kind of a, a learning curve um, that we're still kind of in the middle of. But it doesn't feel like, and I'm, forgive me, I'm reading between the lines here. It doesn't feel like you're that concerned uh, with, with the process. No, no. And, and I think it is a big change from what we have done for the past 30 years. And it's, it's going to get easier as we go forward because Wisconsin has finally joined the 21st century when it comes to offensive football. I mean, everybody from the NFL to Pop Warner is running this stuff now. Um, you're getting, you know, when you hear Braden Locke when he gets interviews, like, yeah, I ran this stuff in high school. And it's not because the air raid stuff is – you know, super easy that even a high school kid could run it is because it works and it's easy to learn, but it's effective. And as we go forward and as the roster gets closer to what Phil Longo needs and Brady Collins has more time to work with the guys to work on speed, conditioning, uh, we're going to get better. And there's, I don't, I think there's anything to worry about. We're going to be able to get the kids we need um, you know, the change in the recruiting department is going to get us the kids we need. And yeah, it's going to get there. I mean, it, it's, it will, you know, Luke Fickle didn't get to the playoffs his first year. You know, he inherited a four and eight team from Tommy Tuberville. He went four and eight his first year. And then, and then, you know, once he got his kids in there, then the thing started rolling. I think we, we still got another off season of roster movement. And, you know, getting this recruiting class, which there's a lot of great kids in this recruiting class that fit what we're doing really well. Uh, Kyan Barry Johnson is going to step in right away. The running backs, you know, as long as we keep all three of them, I, I kind of have a feeling we're only going to keep two of them. But that's my pessimistic side are going to fit in well. So, yeah, Rome wasn't built in the day. So I but I think we're on the right track. Everything you're saying makes a ton of sense. And still, it's going to hurt fans to hear that it's going to take time. It's just that's the fan in all of us, right? Yeah, Myself yeah, included. yeah. Um, I, I want to get back. We're going to take one more quick break. We're going to come back, talk defense, and then I want to ping Ryan on maybe a couple of players that have really stood out to him um, and maybe what he's looking for for Georgia Southern. That's coming up next on Lockdown Badgers, but a quick break for our friends of the show. Um, also, a quick second to say thank you to everybody tuning in. Um, our friends of the show today is game time. We've talked about game time a lot. That's what we're going to use to buy our tickets to our Ohio State game. Me, Rajiv, and Justin are going to that. Super excited. Game time is America's number one ticketing app. Uh, it's fastest growing ticketing app because it's something you don't have to put a lot of brain power into. And that's what we want these services to help us with. Figure out my logistics. Figure out how I get a ticket. Flash sales. Good prices. What do the seats look like? Answer all those questions for me so I don't have to think about it. I just have to think about which bar I'm going to and where am I going to eat cheese curds? Not how am I going to get tickets? Game time figures all of that out for us. And there's a reason everybody is using game time. Snake the tickets without the stress with game time. Download your game time app. And again, it's not just sports, whatever type of entertainment venue you want, download the game time app, create an account, use code locked on college and you get 20 bucks off your first purchase. And your first purchase is already going to be cheaper than you get things anywhere else. Terms apply. Again, create an account, redeem code locked on college for $20 off. Download game time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. All right, let's get coach back on here. Continue talking this. Um, I want to get into some defense here, coach. Talk a little bit about certainly watching the game against Washington State early in the game specifically. There were moments where we were caught in between substitutions. There were moments where uh, we lost track of receivers. Watching the game, what were your thoughts defensively? Yeah, I think a big part of why we struggled early in the game is you can't simulate game-like tempo in practice when your contact is limited, um, time is limited. So getting that real first taste of hyper-fast game tempo can be a little bit jarring. Um but then when you also take into account, you have players who've known each other, players and coaches who've only known each other for a short period of time, who have not played game-like situations with each other at game tempo in a hostile stadium with 35, 40,000 fans. Um, 
there can be issues. Uh, I, I could see a lot where I think they they knew who they wanted to sub in. They had the right people ready to go, and guys in the field weren't looking at the right place. You know, maybe maybe this the, the person handling the substitutions in a different spot than they're used to seeing. Um, you know, you can you can get lost in a sea of of white on the sideline, and so that could have been an issue. Also, I think just the pace that Washington State played at was really fast, and I don't think we're quite at the point yet where, you know, they had a, you know, no call, just base. If if all else fails, we're going to line up in this ready. Um, but they figured it out. You know, eventually, you know, it took some time, and that and that that's what a lot of the season is going to be is we kind of have to do it to figure out what we want and to figure out how it's going to go. Uh, and, you know, I've heard people trying to say, Oh, the, they were not prepared. The coaching staff did not have a game plan. Well, of course the coaching staff had a game plan. Of course they were prepared. There's the kids too. And it all works together and it's still a learning process. And you have a defense that's learning a very different philosophy, even though you're, you know, you're seeing some of the same things that we did under previous defensive coordinators. We're still learning new terminology, new, new coaches. So, you know, we're, we're, we're getting there. Um, but then again, the good thing as well is not many teams in the Big Ten are going to be running at that tempo with those kind of athletes, right, um, sure. you know. You know, we're, we're, we're going to play Iowa and the defense is going to get bored because they're going to feel like they're just standing in the huddle for an hour in between plays because they're just running thing at, everything at a dinosaur pace. So it's going to get there. Um, I, I like I like what they did, especially second half, where you, you saw a lot more dollar. Uh, you saw a lot more. Um, they came out and in a front where they go three down linemen, two outside linebackers up on the line with a signal middle linebacker with Jake Cheney. Um, that really started to cause some pressure. Um, they started moving the, the the dollars and the nickels around a little bit more and kind of starting to manufacture pressure by giving Cam Ward more things to look at, less to do with the design of the pressure coming across the line of scrimmage, but more keeping his eyes occupied to then bring pressure that started to get better. And I think that'll serve them well. Once we get into conference play. By the way, you mentioned uh, the Wisconsin defense going to get maybe a little bored at Iowa. They're not the only people that get bored watching Iowa's <laughs> offense. Yeah. It's all of America. Um, yeah. I want to end here. And again, I really appreciate, I hope we were able to do this again. Like this, I think it's enlightening. I think Absolutely. We get smarter having someone who looks at the game the way a coach does on the show. I certainly do. Um, What's a, what's who's a player that stood out to you this year in a good way? Like, wow, that that player has really made a jump to me or an instant impact. Who, who's a guy that comes to mind for you? I think, you know, on the offensive line, Joe Huber. I think he's done a really good job. I think, I think you can tell he's been not 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 necessarily in the system, but he's played with more tempo. He's had a, you know some more time in the, in the strength and conditioning work program. I think he's done pretty good. Him and Borlini next to each other have actually been. A pretty solid matchup or a, a partnership there. Um, you know, Will Pauling is a special athlete. I think we all knew that, and I think we're starting to see it. The burst he has after getting a completion has been awesome. Uh, that's been great to see. Um, I just don't want to say every every transfer is uh, is like that, but uh, uh, Tucker Ashcraft has been been a positive. Uh, to come in as a true freshman, he's made some mistakes. Um, I, I think, you know, in the Buffalo game, I think two of those interceptions, those two interceptions kind of both had him a little bit, his fingerprints on it. But for being, for being young, um, you can tell he already knows how to work in space. Um, I know he played, he played wide receiver in, in high school. You can see it and he can catch the ball. And he can get he can get open. That's that's really good to see uh, on the offensive side. Uh, defensively, I, I, I'm in totally agreement with you with uh, Jake Cheney. Uh, I think he just needs to get on the field more. Uh, and I think they're going to find ways to. They got three solid inside linebackers, and I think they they're going to find a way to get all three of them on the field more uh, if that's moving 
Turner down to outside linebacker or movement down to outside linebacker or, or going more of a traditional three, three stack at times. But uh, yeah, they, they've been, they've shown some really good things. Um, and when you, and you, you look at the secondary, it's kind of the guys you don't, you don't hear about. And that means make, makes, makes, you know, that we're doing good. Matry Hallman. Um, yeah. it, when you don't hear the cornerbacks call, they're doing something right. Um, so that's been positive. Um, we've had a lot of good plays. It's just kind of stringing them together um, and building some momentum that we maybe had a little bit of issue with, but I think there was some improvements from week one to week two defend uh, on both sides of the ball. Um, so, so we're getting, we're getting there. I love it, man. Uh, he is coach Ryan Anderson. We'll link the, everything that he's doing when we release the show as well. So you can go check out the, his, his um, analysis of the Badgers post game. It's really good stuff. I've done it anyway on Wisconsin, Ryan, thank you so much for jumping on the show. Hope to do it again, my friend. Absolutely. Can't wait. Thank you so much for everybody listening on Wisconsin and we'll talk tomorrow.